Nijmegen, Wikipedia article audio. Nijmegen, Nijmegs, Nimvegen, historically anglicized as Nimigen, is a municipality and a city in the Dutch province of Gelderland. It is situated on the Vaal River, close to the German border. Population centers Proximity of border with Germany History Antiquity Middle Ages Early Modern Period Modernity Geography Climate Sites Historical Remains Museums in and around Nijmegen Parks Politics International Relations Twin Town Sister Cities Culture Events Four Days Marches People Natives Other Residents Religion Sport Economy and Infrastructure more room for the River Vaal. Nijmegen is the oldest city in the Netherlands, the first to be recognized as such in Roman times, and in 2005 celebrated 2,000 years of existence. Transport Education The municipality is part of the Stadsregio Arnhem Nijmegen North a metropolitan area with 736,107 inhabitants. Bibliography The municipality is formed by the city of Nijmegen, incorporating the former villages of Haydert, Hees, and Nierbosch, as well as the urban expansion project of Valsprong, situated north of the river Val and including the village of Lent and the hamlet of Tzand as well as the new suburbs of nijmegen Oesterhout and nijmegen Resen. The city lies a few kilometers from the border with Germany, and to some extent the westernmost villages in the municipality of Kranenburg, Germany, function as dormitories for people who work in the Dutch city of Nijmegen in part due to the immigration of Dutch people from the region that were attracted by the lower house pricing just across the border. The first mention of Nijmegen in history is in the 1st century BC, when the Romans built a military camp on the place where Nijmegen was to appear, the location had great strategic value because of the surrounding hills, which gave a good view over the Val and Rhine Valley. By 69, when the Batavians, the original inhabitants of the Rhine and Moss Delta, revolted, a village called Opitum Batavarum had formed near the Roman camp. This village was destroyed in the revolt, but when it had ended the Romans built another, bigger camp where the Legio ex Gemina was stationed. Soon after, another village formed around this camp. In 98, Nijmegen was the first of two settlements in what is now the Kingdom of the Netherlands to receive Roman city rights. In 103, the ex Gamina was restationed to Vindobana, modern day Vienna, which may have been a major blow to the economy of the village around the camp, losing around 5,000 inhabitants. In 104, Emperor Trajan renamed the town, which now became known as Ulpia Noviomagus Batavarum, Noviomagus for short. Beginning in the second half of the 4th century, Roman power decreased and Novio Magus eventually became part of the Frankish kingdom. It also appeared around this time on the Puddinger map. It has been contended that in the 8th century Emperor Charlemagne maintained his palladium in Nijmegen on at least four occasions. During his brief deposition of 830, the Emperor Louis the Pious was sent to Nijmegen by his son Lothar I thanks to the Val River, trade flourished. The powerful Henry VI, 
Holy Roman Emperor was born at Nijmegen in 1165. In 1230 his son Frederick II, Holy Roman Emperor granted Nijmegen city rights. In 1247, the city was ceded to the Count of Gulders as collateral for a loan. The loan was never repaid, and Nijmegen has been a part of Gelderland ever since. This did not hamper trade, Nijmegen even became part of the Hansa Attic League in 1364. The arts also flourished in this period. Famous medieval painters like the Limborg brothers were born and educated in Nijmegen. During the Dutch Revolt, trade came to a halt and even though Nijmegen became a part of the Republic of United Provinces after its capture from the Spanish in 1591, it remained a border town and had to endure multiple sieges. In 1678 Nijmegen was host to the negotiations between the European powers that aimed to put an end to the constant warfare that had ravaged the continent for years. The result was the Treaty of Nijmegen that, unfortunately, failed to provide for a lasting peace. In the second half of the 19th century, the fortifications around the city became a major problem. There were too many inhabitants inside the walls, but the fortifications could not be demolished because Nijmegen was deemed as being of vital importance to the defense of the Netherlands. When events in the Franco-Prussian War proved that old-fashioned fortifications were no more of use, this policy was changed and the fortifications were dismantled in 1874. The old castle had already been demolished in 1797, so that its bricks could be sold. Through the second half of the 19th century and the first half of the 20th century, Nijmegen grew steadily. The Vaal was bridged in 1878 by a rail bridge and in 1936 by a car bridge, which was claimed to be Europe's biggest bridge at the time. In 1923 the current Radboud University Nijmegen was founded and in 1927 a channel was dug between the Vaal and Moss rivers. In 1940, the Netherlands was invaded by Germany with Nijmegen being the first Dutch city to fall into German hands. On February 22, 1944, Nijmegen was heavily bombed by American planes causing great damage to the city center. It was subsequently claimed by the Allies that the American pilots thought they were bombing the German city of Cleve, while the Germans alleged that it was a planned operation authorized by the Dutch government in exile. The Dutch Organization for Investigating Wartime Atrocities, the NIOD, announced in January 2005 that its study of the incident confirmed that it was an accident caused by poor communications and chaos in the airspace. Over 750 people died in the bombardment. During September 1944, the city saw heavy fighting during Operation Market Garden. The objective in Nijmegen was mainly to prevent the Germans from destroying the bridges. Capturing the road bridge allowed the British Army Triple X Corps to attempt to reach the 1st British Airborne Division in Arnhem. The bridge was heavily defended by over 300 German troops on both the north and south sides with close to 20 anti-tank guns and two anti-aircraft guns, supported with artillery. The Germans' late attempt to blow the road bridge was possibly foiled by a local Dutch resistance hero. Jan van Hoof, who is said to have cut the wires to the bridge. The Germans made repeated attacks on the bridge using bombs attached to driftwood, midget submarines, and later resorted to shelling the bridge with 88mm barrages. Troops were positioned on the bridge giving an excellent arc of fire in case of attack. Troops that couldn't fit onto the bridge were positioned in a bombed-out house slightly upstream of the bridge. 
During the shelling, the house was hit, killing six soldiers and wounding one more. Nijmegen was liberated from German occupation by the British Grenadier Guards of the Guards Armoured Division, as well as elements of the American 82nd Airborne Division in September 1944. The city would later be used as a springboard for Operation Veritable, the invasion across the Rhine River by Allied troops. More recently, on February 23, 1981, the Nijmegen Police Department and the Dutch Army stormed the Pearsonstraat and Zijelhof, a squatted housing block in the city centre of Nijmegen. Using 200 riot vans, three Leopard MBTs, three armoured personnel carriers, a helicopter, 1,200 policemen and 750 members of the armed forces, they evicted the squatters and demolished the block while clouding the entire area in tear gas and CS gas. This received enormous backlash in local politics. While the city government wanted the squatters out to build a parking garage, most of the population wanted affordable housing to be built in the area. As of this date, Nijmegen is still known as Havana on the Val among some right-wingers. The Socialist Party the Green Party and Labour have a solid two-thirds majority in city council, making Nijmegen the only major city in the Netherlands with a solely left-wing government. The current mayor is Hubert Bruels. Nijmegen celebrated its 2000th year of existence in 2005. It is considered the oldest city in the Netherlands. In gaining this qualification, it has competed with the city of Maastricht. In November 2005, the city centre of Nijmegen was the site of the assassination of political activist Louis Sevic by a former activist. Marcel T. was arrested in 2007 in Spain and extradited to the Netherlands. Marcel T. was also accused of bank robbery. Marcel T. committed his acts out of revenge for a forcible eviction from the squatter scene by Louis Sevic. Nijmegen is one of the warmest cities of the Netherlands, especially during summer, when the highest temperatures in the country are usually measured in the triangle Roermond Nijmegen Eindhoven. The lack of north south oriented mountain ranges in Europe make this area prone to sudden shifts in weather giving the region a semi-continental climate. Some of the northernmost wineries in the world are found just outside Nijmegen, around Grosbeek, a suburban village southeast of Nijmegen. During the 2006 European heat wave, closest official weather station Folkel reached a high of 36.7 degrees Celsius on July 19. The heat wave coincided with that year's four-day marches, which were cancelled after the first day, when two people died of hyperthermia-related causes. Temperatures on that day, July 18, reached around 36 degrees Celsius in the city. Nijmegen is in USDA Hardiness Zone 7B and AHS Heat Zone 3. In the following table the monthly precipitation is measured in Nijmegen itself, the monthly sunshine at nearby official weather station Dielen North and the other numbers at closest official weather station Folkel Southwest. Few Roman remains are visible today, a fragment of the old city wall can be seen near the casino and the foundations of the amphitheatre are traced in the paving of the present-day Rembrandt Strat. The Valkhof Museum, on the Valkhof, has a permanent display of the history of Nijmegen, including artifacts from the Roman era. Additionally, they usually have temporary exhibitions of more and less famous artists. Not many very old buildings are left in town, first the Americans carpet bombed it in February 1944. Later the Germans shelled it for about five months after the liberation in September 1944, 
and finally there were a number of vigorous city planners in the 1950s, 60s and 70s who finished the demolition. There are still a few noteworthy sites, however. Valkoff Hill downtown features a Carolingian chapel and a small remainder of an imperial castle that was demolished in 1798. The city council has 39 seats. After the 2002 municipal elections, the three major parties, Gronlinks, PVDA and SP formed a coalition. Because these are all left-wing parties, Nijmegen received the nickname Havana on the Vol. Although such majorities are not exceptional and sometimes also form coalitions, this is unusual for a city this size. Since such a left-wing coalition might be possible at a national level after the 2006 general election, the achievements of this council are often scrutinized. After the 2006 municipal election such a coalition became possible in many more municipalities, making the example even more interesting. The municipal elections of March 7, 2006 saw an increase of 4,6% of the votes for these three parties taken together, which could be seen as increased support for the coalition. However, Nationally these parties scored much better, recovering from an electoral blow of the 2002 elections. Then again, the Leaf Bar parties that caused the loss then and lost most of their votes this time have no branch in Nijmegen, which makes this comparison less valid. Among the three big parties, there was a shift from Gronlinks, who lost 6.5%, to PVDA who won 6.4% and SP, who won 2.3%. As a result, it is no longer the biggest party. The seat assignment is now as shown in the table. The three-party coalition was returned to office. Lawrence, Pete, Lucasen, January In Wunderland van Nederlandse Stad in CA 1300-1800 Amsterdam, NEHA. ISBN 905-742-0082. After the 2010 Dutch municipal election, the PVDA lost three of its 11 seats. Short before the elections, there were problems with the SP. Therefore, Gronlinks and the PVDA formed a coalition with the Social Liberal D66. The municipal elections of March 19, 2014 saw the Socialist Party narrowly becoming the largest party in the Nijmegen City Council after gaining three more seats. The Greens were only some 200 votes behind, while the Liberal Democrats gained another seat while Labour lost half their support, becoming as small as the Liberal Conservative VVD. The coalition government was formed between the three centre-left and leftist parties SP, Gronlinks and PVDA, and a local party called the Nijmegen Group. It also had informal support from the United Senior Party. Later in 2014, a city council member of the VVD, Paul Eigenhuisen, left the VVD group. The former leader of the group, Hake Veldman, had gone to the House of Representatives, and thus left the city council. Eigenhuisen had been second on the party list, but he was not elected to the position of leader. Thereafter, he left the group and started his own one-man group called Liberal Nijmegen. Nijmegen is twinned with Nijmegen has long been known for its annual four days marches, beginning on the third Tuesday of each July. Participants undertake four days of walking distances ranging from 30 to 50 kilometers. The marches are supplemented with festivities such as De Affair and draw participants from as far away as Britain, Canada, the US, Australia, and New Zealand. 
On average, there are 40,000 participants from 30 countries. A piece of music that's often sung and played during the marches is the Four Days March, specially composed by H. A. Van Mechelen in 1932. In 1968, prominent liberal theologians in the Roman Catholic Church issued what is now known as the Nijmegen Statement, demanding sweeping reforms in the Vatican's Holy Office, previously known as the Inquisition, and calling for greater scope for theological inquiry. Among its signatories was the then progressive theologian Father Joseph Ratzinger, then a member of the faculty at the University of Tübingen, but later a much more conservative figure as the head of the successor to the Holy Office, the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, and later still Pope Benedict XVI. The Nijmegen Statement said, any form of inquisition however subtle, not only harms the development of sound theology, it also causes irreparable damage to the credibility of the Church. The signatories, a group of predominantly German-speaking theologians asserted that the freedom of theologians, and theology in the service of the Church, regained by Vatican II, must not be jeopardized again. The signatories pledged their loyalty to the Pope, but argued that the teaching office of Pope and bishops cannot and must not supersede, hamper and impede the teaching task of theologians as scholars. There are several English-language religious meetings in Nijmegen. See the external link for a list of church services in English. Sport in the city is principally focused on its football club NEC. Nijmegen or just NEC short for Nijmegen Eendracht Kombinati, which plays at the 12,500-seat Stadion de Goffert. The club plays in the Ear Saint Divisi. Bandy Viernigging Nijmegen is the biggest bandy club in the country. The national team got celebrated by over a hundred fans and Mayor Hubert Bruhls after winning Division B of the 2018 Bandy World Championship. The city is also home to one of the country's oldest cricket clubs, Quick 1888, a current member of the KNCB. Formed in 1888, the club is the largest cricket club in the east of the country and was formed 13 years after the first club, Udil Dulci from Daventer. The cricket club has both men's and women's teams. The city also has the Nijmegen Devils, an ice hockey club. Nijmegen also plays host to the annuals of Enhuvlen Loop, an annual 15 km run recognized by the IAAF American Samoa a bronze label race. To prevent flooding in the near future, the Dutch government is changing the course of more than 30 rivers throughout the country. These measures, taken along the rivers Isel, Lac, Moss, and Val, are known as Room for the River. Room for the River Val as it passes Nijmegen is one of these measures. As part of this, the artificial island Verlent was created in 2015. The River Val not only has a sharp bend near Nijmegen, it also forms a bottleneck. In 1993 and 1995 this led to high water and floods. To prevent this from happening again and to protect inhabitants of the city and its surroundings against the water, work has been done to relocate the Val Dyke in Lent and to excavate a large ancillary channel in the flood plains, creating an island in the Val. The large-scale project involves the construction of three bridges, new dikes, and concrete water barriers. On the island, a project of alleged sustainable urbanism is giving birth to an urban river park with possibilities for recreation, culture, water, and nature. Nijmegen has five train stations, Nijmegen, Nijmegen Dukenberg, Nijmegen Heyendal, Nijmegen Lent and Nijmegen Goffert.
the central station is connected to the national intercity network. The bus company Brang operates the city buses in the Arnhem-Nijmegen metropolitan area. Like most Dutch cities, bicycles are an important mode of transport. The city is connected to Arnhem, 18 km to the north, by a Fietsnelveg which crosses the Snellbinder Bridge in the city. During 2010-2012 the cycle highway received upgrades to further encourage the use of bicycles for transport between Nijmegen and Arnhem. In May 2016, the Dutch Fietsers Bond awarded the 2016 Fietstad Award to the city of Nijmegen. The river is a busy freight transport route with barges to the city as well as passing through on the way between the industrial regions of Germany and the docks at Amsterdam, Rotterdam and Hook of Holland. The Mosval Canal also carries freight through the city. On November 23, 2013, a new bridge, De Oversteek, that connects the western part of the city to the northern shore, was opened. It relieves congestion of the old road bridge which was built in 1936. It is called De Oversteek since it's built on the location of an important river crossing by the Allied forces during Operation Market Garden in World War II, September 1944. The plan was to liberate the Valbrug from the northern shore, which they managed to do, but with great losses. The bridge was opened by two of the soldiers, a daughter of General Gavin made a speech and family members of World War II soldiers were present. To remember the 48 American soldiers that died, every night 48 pairs of streetlights will go on one by one, from north to south. KLM Royal Dutch Airlines operates a bus from the Nijmegen Railway Station to Skip Hall Airport for KLM customers. Nijmegen is host to Radboud University Nijmegen. Founded in 1923 as the first Catholic university in the Netherlands, it used to be called Catholic University of Nijmegen until 2004, when it took its current name. As of 2013, it had 18,891 students and 5,050 staff. Radboud University runs the High Field Magnetic Laboratory which is able to achieve some of the highest fields available in Europe at 38 Teslas. The facility is available to outside users, primarily for research purposes. The Education and Social Work Departments of the Han University of Applied Sciences, School for Higher Level Vocational Training are also located in Nijmegen, as are that school's medical departments. In addition to these institutions, there is also an intermediate level vocational school and a number of secondary schools, Grown School Nijmegen, Kandinsky College. Nijmegen School and Jemin Skap Grenwoud, Citadel College, Stadelijke School and Jemin Skap Nijmegen, Canisius College, St. Joris School, Mondial College, the Stadelijk Gymnasium, the Carol de Grote College, Montessori College, and the Dominicus College. Of note is also Leafwerk School Eigenages which caters to students from all over the Netherlands who have been repeatedly expelled from regular high schools. Leafwerkskol Eigenages has its roots in the local activist movement of the early 1980s and is the only school of its kind recognized in the Netherlands. Nijmegen is also an important center of psycholinguistics, home to the Max Planck Institute of Psycholinguistics and the FC. Donders Center for Cognitive Neuroimaging The Nobel Prize for Physics in 2010 was awarded to Andre Game and Konstantin Novoslov while at Radboud University for groundbreaking experiments regarding the two-dimensional material Graphene. Literature <laughs>